welcome to ETF Edge. Welcome to ETF Edge, folks. <laughs> your go-to place for everything exchange traded funds. I'm your host, Bob Pisani. We have an interesting show today. Four, not just three, not two, four of the very best in the business. We're going to be talking about the game stock play and its impact on the ETF business here. We're going to be talking with Dan Egan. He's the Managing Director of Behavioral Finance and Investment at Betterment. Will Ryan, founder and CEO of Granite Shares ETFs. Todd Rosenbluth is from CFRA, our friend. And Stephen Mathai Davis, he's the CEO of Q.AI, an AI-driven investment platform. Very interesting crowd. Well, let me start with you. Uh, you run a um, Granite Shares commodity ETF. Uh, it's a basket of commodities, including silver in it. Uh, you also run gold and platinum ETFs. There's a lot of interest in silver. All of a sudden, from the Reddit crowd, they seem to think uh, somehow the, that you can get a short squeeze on this. Um, Tell us, why is silver being targeted, do you think, here? And could the Reddit crowd actually move silver like it moved GameStop? Is that even feasible with something like silver? Well, I think the first thing, Bob, is that um, you know, silver's been targeted because of the same theory that uh, went behind GameStop. In other words, that silver's perceived to be a metal that um, has a lot of short activity, on it, uh, particularly by professional investors and particularly by banks. And so you have right there um, a classic sort of villain um, that you can pin up and say, you know, that banks are, are shorting the silver market and therefore that's a target um, for retail investors uh, in the same way that GameStop was. The, the challenge here is that, you know, banks are short uh, the silver market because they have very legitimate commercial interests in doing so. Um, one of the core reasons that banks do that is because they borrow metal, silver from the market um, for their customers. And those customers could be refiners, they could be uh, mining companies, um, but typically it's legitimate activity. And one important thing is that you know, proprietary trading uh, in banks was banned after the financial crisis. It was the Volcker rule was brought in to do that. And while it has been relaxed you know, slightly over the last sort of 12 months or so, it, it's still in place. Uh, to limit the exact same activity that retail investors are now claiming still exists within the banks, which is large groups of proprietary speculative traders um, within the banking system. And that just doesn't happen today to the same degree. Yeah. So it, is the bottom line is it, it, it seems unlikely that a GameStop crowd could move silver. I mean, how much bigger is silver? Silver's got to be 30, 40, 50 times bigger than, than even GameStop. No, I mean, it seems mm -hmm. highly unlikely that somehow you're going to execute some gigantic move uh, in, in, in silver. We're not going to see silver move 300% in three days, right? I, I, would, I would think it's, you know, you use the word highly unlikely. Um, and the, the simple fact is that silver is just a much, much bigger market, you know, magnitudes larger. Uh, my best estimate is just in terms of uh, the value of GameStop uh, before it went crazy, it was about 1.4 billion um, market cap. And that was in a thinly traded you know, stock with limited float. Uh, the silver market, just to if you take just the number of ounces of metal um, sitting in the London vault, so just the physical side of the market, not including futures or anything else, talking about a market cap of today's price is about 30 billion. So a much, much bigger market. Um, and therefore, I think, you know, in, in, in some essence, while by no means this is the, this is the end, it's just the beginning, but silver prices are up you know, we're at about 7% um, now, probably as high as 10% as on the day. But that's much less than the, you know, many, many time increase we saw on GameStop. Right. And I think it, you and I talked about this earlier. The CFTC is likely to step in, the, 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 the overall regulator here, if things get crazy. And they do that routinely. They step in and raise margin requirements uh, on these futures contracts uh, when things get out of whack, Correct. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, whenever you get, I mean, first of all, commodities and commodity futures, it's a highly regulated market. Um, and you have you know, a number of professional market participants uh, in the market. And obviously, the job of the exchange primarily it sets the margin requirements is to limit and, you know, raise or lower those margin requirements depending on, on market activity. And so if silver or any other commodities for that matter get out of whack, or there's a lot of speculative activity, yeah. you know, the exchange can raise the margin and force uh, the professional market participants to post higher amounts of collateral, obviously, against those positions yeah. and to limit market risk. Yeah, it seems to 
that seems a very easy way to, to sort of make people lighten up on their positions. <laughs>